Apparently, some of you don't want to watch my 45 minute long Express LRS definitive getting started guide. You just want a video that tells you when you get an Express LRS receiver and a controller, how do you freaking get them bound up? And that's what this video is. Quick, short, and to the point. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Here is my brand new quadcopter, and I have installed an Express LRS receiver in it. This video is not about installing the receiver. This video is not about installing Express LRS configurator or downloading the Lua script. It's not about all that getting started stuff. That's in the 45 minute long getting started guide, which of course is linked in the video description below. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to power up the receiver and wait. And I'm gonna wait for that LED, there it was, I'm gonna wait for that LED to begin fast flashing. The fast flashing means it has gone into Wi-Fi mode and I'm not even going to do anything in Express LRS Configurator yet. No, no, no. I'm gonna to connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot. If I go to my Wi-Fi networks, I should see, there it is, a Wi-Fi network, Express LRS RX. If I click on that and go to connect, the password is Express LRS, all lowercase. That's, that's it. it. My computer has remembered the password because I've done this before. Now at this point, some computers and some phones will just automatically connect and pop up a web browser window that takes you where I'm about to take you next. On this computer, it never seems to do it. And in fact, it actually acts like it hasn't even finished connecting yet. I don't know why that is. I'm gonna bring up my web browser and I'm gonna go to the web address 10.0.0.1 and that is boom my Wi-Fi hotspot page for my receiver. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at what firmware version is on the receiver. Now this receiver has firmware 2.4.0. We want the receiver to be on 3. Well, it has to be on 3. whatever, but we're gonna update it to the latest. If it's not on 3. whatever, then you are gonna need to flash it. If it is on 3. whatever, you can probably skip the flashing step, although you certainly could update it to the latest if you want to. Since we're gonna flash, we are gonna to need to go to Express LRS Configurator and we are gonna to need to pick the correct device category and target. Uh, and so we're gonna go back here to the web page, and we're gonna look at the name of the firmware. And we can see the firmware here is Happy Model EP2400RX. We're then gonna go in Express LRS Configurator. We're gonna type Happy Model and we're gonna look for Happy Model EP2400RX. And this is the thing that most closely matches that, so that's what we're gonna select. Except, except, except. I happen to know that this is a Radio Master RP2 receiver. Why has it got Happy Model firmware on it? And the answer to that is that a lot of these vendors just sort of copy. It's open source hardware. They just copy each other and sometimes they ship with a different firmware on it. Specifically, you may find receivers shipping with the DIY 2400RX firmware. You may see them shipping with DIY firmware. In that case, if you know for a fact that this is a, for example, Radio Master receiver, you could choose to flash it with Radio Master. And this is the Radio Master RP2-2400RX. I happen to know for a fact that's what receiver this is. And so you could just go ahead and flash it with the correct firmware. You could also just flash it with, you will always be safe to flash it with whatever you see here. But since I know it's a Radio Master, I'll go ahead and do the Radio Master firmware. Oh, by the way, did you tr go to Express LRS Configurator and it couldn't load the targets and it wouldn't build the firmware? Yeah, um, the reason for that is that you're not on the internet anymore. When you connected to the Express LRS receiver's Wi-Fi network, you disconnected from your home Wi-Fi network and now you're not on the internet anymore. You'll need to go back to your uh, Wi-Fi settings and connect back to your home Wi-Fi network download and compile the firmware, then connect back to the Express LRS hotspot. Uh, the reason it works for me is I have two different Wi-Fi adapters on my machine and one of them still on. So this machine is wired. You could go ahead and put your binding phrase in here. You can, and it might work. Uh, most of these other options you should leave at default and then we are simply gonna hit build. We are not gonna hit build and flash. You see, hitting build and flash will attempt to automatically flash the receiver, but a lot of the time that doesn't work and it's super freaking annoying. I'm gonna show you the way that I actually do it that works most every time. 
While I'm doing that, I'm also going to tell you that everything I'm talking about in this video pertains only to serial-based receivers. If you have a, mostly it's tiny whoop flight controller with a uh, SPI-based receiver, then what I'm going to show you is not going to work. Uh, the way you can tell which you've got is to go into Betaflight Configurator, connect to your flight controller, go to the receiver tab, and look here. And if it says receiver type SPI and receiver provider ELRS, then you have an SPI-based receiver. In that case, there are a different set of instructions for setting your bind phrase and changing your firmware. And I'm not even sure we're gonna talk about that in this video because those are getting more and more rare. So the build has finished and now we have this firmware file. And for, it's somewhere on my hard drive, I have no idea where, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that and copy it to my desktop so I can easily find it. Then I'm gonna go back to this Express LRS update page. And we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna to go to the firmware update section and choose file. We're gonna to go to our desktop and we're gonna click on that firmware.bin and open and update. And this is gonna update the firmware on your receiver. This is how I always update the firmware on my receiver if possible because every other way tends to be more annoying. Update successful. Now at this point, we have flashed the receiver with ExpressLRS 3.0 and the fast flashing has begun. Again, the receiver has gone back into Wi-Fi mode. We are once again going to connect to the ExpressLRS RX Wi-Fi network, password ExpressLRS, all lowercase. And then we're gonna go back to the page 10.0.0.1. And here we see the ExpressLRS 3.0 web page, which has a few more options. That's interesting. It still says happy model, even though I definitely flashed it with Radio Master. Okay, I guess I don't care. Uh, the runtime option that I want to show you is the binding phrase. And you may be thinking, well, why do I need to put the binding phrase in? When I flashed the receiver, didn't I put the binding phrase in? And that's true. When you compile firmware, a binding phrase is stored in that firmware. And when you flash the receiver, that binding phrase is uploaded to the receiver. However, the binding phrase that is put in the web UI will override the binding phrase that is in the firmware. So another approach you can take is simply to go to the web UI and type your bind phrase there. I don't want to show you what my bind phrase is. I'm going to type my binding phrase and I'm going to hit save and reboot. And when I do that, now I know for 100% sure that my binding phrase is stored on this receiver. However, if you subsequently flash this receiver with a firmware that has a different binding phrase, that binding phrase will not take effect. The binding phrase you put in the web UI will always uh, take precedence. So that's how you set up your receiver. And if you've already set your controller up with a bind phrase, then you're done. But the first time you get a new controller, you're also gonna need to go through that process for the controller. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. Just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you. You can change the amount or stop whenever you want. Patrons get access to my Discord server, which uh, the people who are on it tell me I really undersell it. Uh, they say it's one of the best resources in FPV. You can chat about FPV. You can get help for your problems. There's a troubleshooting forum. There's a buy, sell, trade forum. It's just a really, really great place to meet and talk with other people in FPV. Uh, but mostly, I hope you subscribe to my Patreon, not because you want access to the Discord server, as great as it is. I hope you subscribe to my Patreon because you've been watching my content. I've been helping you solve problems. I've taught you a whole bunch of stuff. And today's the day that you go, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give something back. If today is that day, there's a link in the video description below to my Patreon. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And if today's not that day, that's cool. Keep watching the content. And uh, hopefully that day will come. And the process for the controller is exactly the same. The first thing I'm going to do is go into the ExpressLRS Lua script. The exact way to do that is going to depend on which radio you've got. On this radio, I've got the sys key, and if I hold down the sys key, it takes me to the tools menu, and the very first uh, item in that menu is the ExpressLRS script. If you need to know how to download and install the Lua script on your radio because you're just getting started, you need my 45-minute-long ExpressLRS Definitive Getting Started guide. It'll show you how to do that. 
So we're going to activate the ExpressLRS script and we're going to go down here to Wi-Fi connectivity and we are going to choose enable Wi-Fi and that will enable Wi-Fi on the module in the radio. Wi-Fi is running. We're going to go back here to uh, my Wi-Fi networks and let's just disconnect here. Aha! And we see here ExpressLRS TX. We can connect to that. That's going to give me my radio. Once again, we're going to go to 10001 and here we can see we are talking to the transmitter, Radio Master Boxer 2.4 gigahertz. And in this case, I'm already on firmware 3.x, although it looks, doesn't look like it's the most recent, so I guess I could update the firmware. Uh, but the main thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type the binding phrase here, or I can just manually check that the UID that we see here matches the UID for the receiver, and that would indicate they are uh, bound together. This is the part of the video where I tell you what you might want to watch next. And no, I'm not going to send you to the 45 minute long Express LRS definitive getting started guide. I'm going to guess that you've probably gotten started already, but it, there's links in the video description if you do want to watch that. No, instead I'm going to send you somewhere much more interesting. I've got two videos queued up. The first one has to do with a feature of ExpressLS called Model Match that almost no one understands how it works, and they don't use it, and that's a shame because for some people it's actually super, super useful. That's one of the videos. The other one is going to be my video about why SPI-based ExpressLS receivers suck so much, and and uh, how to get them bound and set up instead of the serial receivers that we were talking about in this video. Cards on screen to both of those, as well as links in the video description. If you can't see the cards for some reason, I will see you there.